Yo, what is up guys, JT here. I'm gonna be bringing you a tutorial video today on the workshop implementation in Survive Tonight. We're gonna to be creating a zombie a survival scenario, kind of like Nazi zombies, which lets you fend off zombies in a constant horde wave kind of situation. I'm gonna jump straight into the process here by explaining what scenarios are and then how we make them and then how we upload them to the Steam Workshop. A scenario in Survive the Nights is effectively just a world save. It's nothing more than that. It's just a folder which contains information about your game save. A scenario can be just uh, an accumulation of settings and permissions and user files and such, or it can also include a database file so that you can have set up world situations and fun stuff like that. Jumping over onto the scenario tab here, you can see that we actually have some official scenarios. We've got our zombie, Nazi zombies type one, and we've also got a Night of the Living Dead one. If you click on this button here, you can actually see it opens in the overlay, takes you directly to your workshop item where you can see its description, comments, see what people like, what they don't like, and you can see how many people have subscribed and if it's being liked and such, so you can make revisions in the future. I'm gonna start by creating this scenario from the default. And like I said, we're gonna be creating a Nazi zombie style situation here, and I've already chose that it's gonna be at a cabin. So let's go ahead and name this world Nazi zombies hunters, let's say cabin. We'll create the world save, set some settings up, and then we'll actually jump into game and start setting the scene. We need to set a custom spawn point, among other things. Okay, for this, we don't want time progression. For now, let's just set the time to 12 in the afternoon while we're setting it up so that it's nice and bright. I'm going to actually set my moon position for this to opposite so that it's nice and bright on the night. If you set that to realistic, there's moon cycles and you get some dark and some lighter nights. Loot's not relevant in this scenario, so let's just turn it off. We don't need loot respawning. Condition's not relevant either. And let's also turn off item ownership. Since this is a bit of an arcade experience, we don't need ownership. You should only really be playing this with your friends. Zombies, we don't need zombies for this, so let's just turn it off for now, since they're gonna be being spawned as hordes. And I'll leave the min health and max health as it is, but you could tweak all of these settings if you wanted to. Do. For example, you could make it headshot only kills, which would really increase the difficulty of this scenario and make it kind of more like The Walking Dead or something like that, where you have to go for headshot. Horde mode, okay, so let's go through these options. There's nightly, which works in the way that the general game works, and then there's also constant, which gives a constant flow of hordes one after the other. But for while we're setting up the scenario, let's just disable zombies altogether. Okay, uh, animals is not relevant, player. Let's have a look at some of the options in here. Spawn point, for now, we're gonna be setting a custom spawn point, but for now, let's just leave that set to house. We'll give ourselves some uh, admin perms, and we'll actually teleport over to where we're gonna do this, and we'll set a player spawn custom for this scenario. Um, none of these options look too. Items on death, let's turn that off since um, we don't want backpacks fogging up the world if your friends die near you inside the cabin. Uh, fortifications, okay, fortification tool efficiency. Let's turn that up a little bit. Since this is an arcade experience, we want fortifications to go up more freely. We might actually even come in and turn that up even further so that it really creates that arcade fun zombie uh, feel. Tutorial behavior, let's just force a tutorial off since we'd, we'd never want that to show in this scenario. Uh, the map, actually we'll leave the map on, it doesn't really hurt anything. And we don't want the crafting level system. That just means that all craftables are available straight away. We want allow multiplayer turned on. We'll, we'll leave it for this so you can play co-op with your friends. You could change the welcome message if you wanted to. I don't think it's too relevant. We'll turn PvP off for this since uh, you're going to be playing with your friends anyway. And it really gives that arcade feel. And we'll turn the name tag distance up too. Let's leave most of this in here. You couldn't rename this if you want here like I have. Um, we're going to use Steam networking for this. That just makes you know, all of the connection issues uh, with opening ports and such go away. You, if you have Steam relays, you can just open the Steam overlay and invite your friends providing your in-game. We'll leave the workshop tab for now, but we'll come back to that when we actually upload. Let's jump straight into this world that we've just created here. I'm going to set my perms up so that I can use admin commands and everything that I use in this tutorial today is available to the community. I will make a video on all of the admin commands that we have, but you can jump over onto the wiki if you, if you really want to dig deep in that, but I'll explain everything that I use here today. One thing to note when you create a world yourself, you are marked as the owner, which is user rank three, and you can call the set rank command on anything lower than your, than your user. So what we need to do here, by default, owner doesn't really have any perms, but admin has everything. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna call set rank here, my username, and then set that to two. And what that will do is it'll actually downgrade me from owner to admin, but by default, admin has the asterisk perm, which gives me access to all commands, which makes everything much, much easier for when you're trying to set something like this up. We're gonna open up the map. And like I said, I've, I think I've already chosen a location for this, but you could go around the map and look for where you would like to do it. The possibilities are kind of endless, but I've chosen this little cabin here. So I'm gonna shift click on the map and that will actually teleport me directly to the location. And again, that is because I am an admin. I just ran the kill Z command just in case there's any zombies. 
and it, there is it is actually one that spawned in the cabin. But this location looks really good to me. I think it's there's not too many entryways. There's no other buildings around the area, and it should be a really nice area to get set up. We're going to jump straight into the setup of the environment, and the first thing I'm going to do is actually place a bed down. And what this will do is allow me to clean up the whole house and not have anything come back. And we'll just leave that sleeping bag down, even in the release scenario, because it will stop any of the things around this reappearing. You can see here that I'm using a, a combination of commands. I'm using forward slash lookup and then the, the item, the name of the item that I'm trying to find, and that will return a list of things that match that part name that you entered. I'm also using give, which is a command which allows you to give a, a very specific item and the quantity that you'd like to. But then there's also a nice utility command that I'm using here called forward slash try give part name, which will basically just look through all of the drops that, that are in the game and give you some of them. If you did something like uh, try give plank you would receive one of each plank effectively that the game has and you'd then be able to figure out the id from there it can be really useful sometimes for when you're just trying to move very quickly and, and, and find what you wanted to put down so i've gone through here and i've placed racking down i've placed foot wood by the fire i've fortified some of the windows i've put pegboards up and placed guns all over and i've also laid some traps outside in in anticipation for the player but i've also put some traps strategically around the scenario as well so that as the hordes progress players can actually put put them out as they kill the waves we're going to put a little break in between each wave so that players can run around and re-fortify put new traps out and prepare a little bit so that they can survive a little bit longer okay i've exited game and i think it's time to create our workshop item we're not going to make it visible at this point but it's going to serve as a point in time which means we can't lose progress the first option i'm going to turn on is the reset database after play and what this option does is exactly what it says it replaces the database after each play session typically you wouldn't want that turned on with a normal game world safe because you'd want to pick up from where you left off from play session to play session but for a arcade nazi zombies type experience we want it to actually refresh and put the database back to the database that we've set each time a player jumps into game so i'm going to go over onto the create button here and i'm going to set the name i'm going to set the description up and what i'm actually going to do for this is i'm going to turn the visibility off since we know at this moment the hordes aren't even turned on. I'm really just creating this workshop item right now to serve as a backup for us. We could always roll back to it if we needed to. And it just means that everything's secure and safe and we're not gonna run the chance of risking all of that setup we just did in, in the world. So let's go ahead and click create here. And you can see there's a little readout for what's happening here. And it actually says that I need to accept the user agreement. I've gone ahead and done that. And here you can see the item. This is opened in the overlay and you can see my items here. You can also see that there's no artwork for it yet. I actually have some artwork prepared for this and I'll show you now how to change that. Jumping back over to the game, you can see here the options for replacing the image. And basically it just has to be under one megabyte. This is something that's set by Steam. I know it's a bit awkward, but it's very workable and, and you can work around it. The file has to be called preview. And as long as it's named that and it's inside the world save, which you can ping from the page for in game there, it will work when you update the um, scenario. So what I've done there is I've just gone and replaced it. I've put a JPJ in there and uh, I'm going to go ahead and update the store page with that piece of artwork. So we're on the create tab, so I'm going to close that. I'm going to go to the update button here and you can see when I click update, it's still leave visibility turned off at this point. I am going to go back over to the Steam overlay or the Steam overlay will automatically open after you update your item. And you can see that the artwork is now updated. Okay, let's jump back over to the game and go to the hordes tab and we're actually going to try this out now. So I've turned hordes onto constant. I'm just looking through the settings here and making sure that everything is going to work the way I want. I'm actually going to turn hordes on a frequency up to high so that um, all the zombies are pretty much runners in this since we want it to be fast paced action. And we'll leave the hordes runner speed on slow so that we can shoot them as they're kind of running up to the buildings. But we don't really want that more old school walker zombie experience for, for this scenario. The next options I'm going to change are the delay before the initial hordes start and the wait time between hordes once you're in game. This is something you can really, really play around with to give a completely different experience. The longer you give people between waves, the more time they have to refortify, prepare themselves, clean their weapons, restock up on ammo and such. Alternatively, you could give that time at the beginning and really give the player time to prepare the world in the first place. Okay, I've jumped back over to the Steam Workshop tab and remember this reset database after play option has to be on because after each play session, we want it to, the, the database to be placed back as it was when we set up this scenario. So let's go ahead here and click update and then the scenario should be ready to play for the first time and then what we'll do is we'll play it and we'll come back out and then make some more tweaks after trying the, the thing out for the first time ourselves. 
I can guarantee that after you've played it a few times, you're going to want to keep making changes. The community is going to have ideas for how it can be made better as well. And it's something that you can continually update over time. OK, so I jumped into the scenario and actually played through it. I'm not going to show the full footage here because it was actually about half an hour long. I survived into a hall at level nine. And as a starting base, it was actually pretty fun. What I was doing was I was switching over to my notes as I was playing and writing down things that I thought would make the scenario better. I feel like it needs to be a little bit more difficult, for example. Uh, there's no first aid kits around what the, what, from our initial pass when placing all of the items. We need more weapon attachments for things like the handguns. There's no hammer and nails to place on fortifications as we continue to get through the hordes. More traps would be fun to go around placing those between hordes as well. And we need way, way more ammo. I actually ended up having to give myself ammo, which obviously people playing your scenario are not going to be able to do. So let's go ahead and jump back over to the settings. We'll turn hordes off and then we'll actually jump back into game and continue setting up the scenario. Okay, so I've turned hordes off and I've relaunched the scenario. And by turning hordes off, it stops zombies coming and allows us to go in and change the database file again. When I leave game, I need to remember to turn hordes back on and then update the scenario so that it includes these revisions that we've just made. I've gone around and made all the changes which I felt were necessary to make the improvements that we needed. And then finally, what I do here is I actually set the player spawn location so that new players will always spawn in one of two spawn locations at this location. The command to add a spawn point is forward slash player spawn space add space the name of the spawn point that you want to set. You can set as many as you want and as long as you use the player spawn command, these will be available when spawning in the world and they will always be chosen at random. In this case, I added two spawn points and that allows for spawning in different rooms, but always inside of the house. It's time to jump back over to the menus and make a final revision so that we can release this scenario for players to enjoy. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn back on constant hordes. Of course, I had that turned off so that I could make revisions to my database file. Uh, after that, I'm going to go ahead and set the player spawn location so that that is used. So I'm going to go to the player tab. And at the moment, initial spawn location is set to house. And I'm going to go ahead and set that to custom. And that will use those spawn points that we've just made. And I'm also going to set the same for respawn location in the event that one of your friends dies while the scenario is taking place. They'll be able to rejoin and jump back up. And we don't want sleeping bag respawning turned on for this either. Okay, so the last thing now we need to do is we need to make this thing public. So we're going to go over to the update tab and remember one more time the reset database after play needs to be turned on. We're going to go to the update tab and we're going to hit that toggle for visibility there. And once we set that over to true, other players will see our workshop item in the workshop, but they'll also see it in game as well if they go to the scenarios tab and they'll have an option to click download it and play your creation. I've really only been able to scratch the surface on what's possible with scenarios in this video. I will list and link to the wiki page for all the commands that I used in, in this video. There's so many admin commands that I, I just didn't want to use because I didn't want it to be overwhelming, but they're all there and they exist to make this kind of content. We really look forward to seeing what kind of scenarios the community come up with. If you do come up with something or if you get stuck, reach out to us on the Discord. We're always here to help. And if you do make something awesome, we'd love to feature it in, in one of our updates as well. I'll catch you in the next video, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.